All right. So it looks like um, majority of the room has done video marketing before. So that's awesome. So hopefully this is just going to expand and make you more confident on what to do as a full marketing campaign and marketing plan. And then as I suspected, the answer is yes, I've done videos, but also yes, I'm very intimidated. <laughs> and in looking at the chat, it seems like the editing Choosing the platform, we'll definitely be talking about that today. Time commitment, I have some tips for you. Looking professional and adding creative features to it. The equipment, we'll be talking about that as well. The time investment. So it sounds like you are in the right place because not only are we gonna be talking about how to produce quality videos on your own, what those videos should be, how to produce them, and really where should you be focusing your time posting them. Although I am a video production and video marketing organization, we still want to empower you to know how to do these videos on your own, because there's going to be times where it just may make sense for you to do it on your own. So at any point in the presentation, if you have any questions, please locate that Q&A button that you'll find on your toolbar. Go ahead post questions in there, not in the chat. It's a lot easier for me to organize that. I'll peek at the Q&A here and there. And if it's something that I feel needs to be answered right away, I'll take that moment, I'll answer it right away, uh, or we'll just save them till the very end uh, if I know I'm gonna be answering it in a moment. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. As I said, you're gonna be learning what types of videos you should be producing. And we're gonna be reviewing really the, the three most common types of videos that your business should focus on. How to script them, the equipment you need in order to make them look professional and where to post them. And then of course, I think what's most important is your questions. At the end of the day, I want you to be able to walk away with the confidence and the plan in order to implement your own video marketing strategy. So number one, the first types of videos that you should really be focusing on are reviews, testimonials. Those are your third party validations. People truly care what other people think and experience because they want to be able to experience the same success. There wouldn't be sites like Yelp. People wouldn't look at Google reviews or Amazon reviews before they purchase if they didn't care what other people thought. And yes, you could still ask for those written responses because you're going to hear a common theme that content is still king and queen. You still need to focus on that written content. But video is believed. Video is something that builds that trust so much faster because they're able to see the emotion in that person. They're able to see that they're a real person, not some fake avatar, not your, your coworkers or your staff members writing reviews, but a real customer who wants to share about that experience. So Whenever you're about to get a testimonial or review, these are really the questions you want to ask them. And what you want to do is you want to coach that person in restating the question within the answer. So that way with basic editing, and yes, we'll touch on editing, you can then edit out you asking those various questions and just have this beautiful full story. So really, we want to be able to tell a full story about this experience. And if you're a B2B business, that first question is a great way to kind of convince some of your testimonials and reviews to do a video for you, because then they're able to toot their own horn a little bit and be able to talk about themselves. So what is your name and who are they? What's their business? And if you're a B2C organization, we still want to hear, you know, my name is Taylor and I'm a mom of a three-year-old. That then gives that perspective if someone's also watching going, oh, I'm a mom of a toddler too. Maybe this is for me. Now, how did you get started working together? Once again, we want to tell a story. We are connected to stories. And so go ahead and share, how did you start working together? And then what was the process like? We want to hear some 
actual steps that happened, the more detailed you can get your testimonials and reviews to be, the better, because then people can really visualize themselves going through that process as well. And then what were the results? The more tangible, the better. If you're a fitness trainer, how quickly did you help? Did they get to their goals? Did they lose their weight? If you're a realtor, how fast did you find that perfect dream home? Or how quickly were you able to sell your home? You want to be able to talk about those tangible results that people can truly see for themselves. And then have they tried a similar product or service before? And how did this differ? Now, I am not big on bashing companies. I never, ever want you to say or have your testimonials say, I tried XYZ Realtor or I tried XYZ Landscaper and they were terrible. Instead, just have them highlight you and what made you stand out? Was it your, you know, we tried to use a similar air conditioning service and they never followed up with us about resurfacing our air conditioning unit. But when we worked with AZAC, they were able to follow up and make it so we always had confidence our AC would work in the summer. Make them really just talk about you in a better light but make it so they also seemed experienced. That's kind of the key with this, this number five question is that it wasn't the first time they're experienced and with their experiences, you are the best. Now, this is the really the most important question, number six. And if you have a very, very busy person, a very busy testimonial or review, and they're trying to run out of the office, make sure you just ask this one question. And it's extremely important that not only do they say the words recommend, make sure they say your name or your business name. So would you recommend the same service, person, business, product, and why? If you wanted to eliminate extra editing, that's really the one question you want to have them answer. It's just, I would recommend you because, and have them just share from the heart their simple story. And the best time to capture these testimonials is going to be in the moment. Normally, when you're done uh, you know, with a service or they just started using their product and they see you again, they're going to start raving about it. They're going to start saying, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I can't believe how much my mother loved that gift that I bought. That bouquet that you made was just absolutely fabulous. When they're making those comments, we got to get better as, as marketers to go, oh, wait a second, time out, stop do you mind if I capture this on video really quick? Because that's when their energy is the highest and that's when they're most authentic because they're already just telling you how they feel. And so really get into the habit of really using those two ears, really listening for those cues to go, this is a perfect time to capture those testimonials. So the second type of video that you want to focus on are introductions. And yes, there is a plural to that, introductions, because there's a lot of people and organizations that offer more than one service. And so it's really, you might need to have multiple introductions, but you start with one, that's kind of that business overview, and then you can break them down into others. So let's talk about some of those scripts. And these are really going to be, uh, you know, those, those business cards, those business cards, those video business cards that you're going to sprinkle everywhere. And so I do see a question that popped up in the chat. Um, please try to use the Q&A button when you can, but I'm going to answer it. They asked, do um, the interviews sign talent releases before you post the video? It's definitely a good habit to either get written talent releases or what we do a lot of times, especially if we're doing kind of like on the street interviews, is verbally have them give us consent on video. So we would say something like, um, do you agree to be recorded for XYZ project with no compensation involved? Uh, do you understand we may use your video, photograph, or audio in part or whole? 
do you agree? And then if they say, yes, you agree, you just want to archive and save that footage. So that way you can recall on it. If anything happened, you're a multi-trillion dollar business. And someone wants to say, it's because my amazing testimonial, I should get paid. You can then pull up that footage or pull up that document and say, mm, you said you were going to do this without compensation. So very good question. So these are the questions that you want to answer when you're scripting your introduction videos. Notice I am talking a lot about scripting. It's so important to do your pre-production work. Not only by doing this, will you be able to organize your thoughts, perhaps even use a teleprompter to be able to have a little more crisp performance. You'll also be able to utilize your scripting when you're doing some search engine optimization, which we'll discuss a little later in this presentation. And so really take the time to script. Even if you don't have a teleprompter to use, take the time to script. It's going to help you, I promise. Now, in these introduction videos, we know that, you know, people have short attention spans. And so we really want to try to stay within one minute, if possible. Uh, the longer your videos, the more elements you want to add to them, whether it be B-rolls, that secondary footage that you can show in order to keep someone's attention, or text graphics or motion graphics, the longer it is, the more you need to insert. But if you answer these these questions using only one sentence, you're more than likely going to hit that one minute mark. If you are truly typing out your scripts, about 150 words equals a minute. Of course, that's going to vary depending on how fast or how slow you, you speak. But in general, 150 is one minute. So what problem does your offering solve? People are online looking for solutions. They're looking for solutions to what gift should they buy for Mother's Day or how to budget better or how to grow their business. People want to know how to do things or how to solve their problem. And so in that very first second, our attention span, you need to catch our attention within the first three seconds. Go ahead and share what problem does your offering solve. Then say, who are you and your business name? Because you've already got their attention. You already know, oh, you actually can solve my problem. And then who is your target audience? Not only are these introduction videos going to help, you know, people know that you're a good fit, you're going to eliminate people who maybe aren't a good fit for you. And then again, similar to your review and testimonial, how are you different from your competition and what makes you unique? Again, I do not want you to name bash anyone. That's, there's no reason for that. Instead, talk about what separates you? What is that, that extra uniqueness about you, your differentiator about you and your business? And then what resistance or objections will people have to you? I'm sure you can recall many sales meetings where people kind of feel like a broken record. They may say the same objection. Oh, well, that takes too long. You know, why do I need to do a six month contract for SEO? That seems like a long time. Or why is it X number of dollars? Go ahead and talk about those resistance or objections in your introduction video. So that way people are already moving past that and you can carry on and move past that conversation. Video is really about a customer journey, a sales journey. And so the more that really you can save time and then get to that next step when you actually talk to each other in person, the better. And then the call to action. This is really going to be something that you want to put in every single video you produce. When, where, and how do you want people to take action? And that's something where you want to be detailed and not give multiple options. Don't say you can go to my website, you can give me a text, you can do this, you can do that. Just give someone one option. Think about when you go to a restaurant. The best restaurants are the ones that just have that one page. They make it simple. They say, hey, here's your few options. What do you want? But if there's too many options, granted, I do love the Cheesecake Factory. If there's too many options, it can really make people frustrated and not sure what to do. And then sometimes they choose to do nothing. And so in your videos, truly say, if you have a, uh, you know, page you want, landing page, you want people to sign up for a newsletter, 
push them just to the landing page. If you want people to sign up for a strategy session and contact you, just make that one call to action. And it's a bonus if you can add that number six, why we would recommend this company testimonial in your introduction video, that's a bonus because now you're also including that third-party validation. And so answering these questions, just using one sentence and then trying just to have that one recommendation line of your testimonial is going to give you a stellar introduction video to use. The third type of video that you should really be focusing on are what we called SSME videos. These are search and subject matter expert videos. These are the videos that are really going to be the majority of your marketing campaign. And so these are going to be your frequently asked questions. If you have a frequently asked questions page on your website, look at every single question you have on there and make a video for it. Not only only is adding that video going to be better for your website SEO, it's going to be something that you can then sprinkle across your social media accounts. What are you getting hand cramps repeating? Or what do you just feel like a broken record constantly re-saying in your sales meetings or in your follow-up meetings? If people are consistently asking the same question, then more likely you should make it a video. People actually retain about 90% of the content given in a video comparative to only 20% when read and 30% when heard. It's because we're able to combine the senses and it's a lot easier for us just to absorb video information than the work it takes to read and then formulate those thoughts in our mind. And so people are going to remember what you're sharing in a video. Are there any definitions that are in your industry that you think are just obvious that should really be put into a video? I know whenever I was you know, talking with clients, I mentioned B-roll, that secondary footage. And eventually someone said, okay, what is B-roll? I've been in the industry for so long, I didn't think that people wouldn't know what that term was. But when you're so involved in your industry, sometimes you just think things are just second nature, but they're not. And so the more that you can just share those definitions, not only is it going to help with the search because people can then search what that answer is, but it's just going to validate and show that you are a subject matter expert in your industry. Is there anything seasonal that you can discuss? Mother's Day is coming. It's getting hotter in Arizona. What are some things that can be really seasonal that you can also post on your social media just so that way you're with the times? And on that same note, what is trending? You do want to show that you have a pulse on what's going on in the world. And so is there anything that you can also discuss that does fit well within your industry? By then blending all of these types of videos, you're going to have a very fresh campaign online because it's going to have that nice variety. And notice none of these are sales videos. Other than your maybe your introduction video, I'm not really highly recommending that you just push out only commercials and only sales videos. Yes, you should definitely have a commercial. There's definitely an importance to having some sales videos, but they should not be your primary focus. These types of videos really should be your primary focus because they say giving is the new viral. The more you just give out your information, the more that you share and give people that confidence to learn more about your industry, to see that you're the subject matter expert, you're going to be top of mind. And so when someone really needs your product or service, they're going to go to you because you've been already giving and sharing so much content already. And you can truly give everyone the blueprints. If you had a, a service, give them the blueprints. Hey, I'm giving you the blueprints right now to many things, but you shouldn't be afraid of that because majority of the time that's going to give people the confidence to want to take the next step, but they're going to want to get their hand held and who else would they want to hold the hand, but with yours. And so definitely do not be afraid to share your information. So to show people that you really are that subject matter expert that people can trust. And again, we want to try to keep them short, one minute or less. So if you're scripting these, which I highly suggest you take the time to script, try to keep them within 150 words or less. 
All right. So those are the three types of videos that you should really be focusing on. My goodness, if this was my cat, I'd be so upset seeing them not on a, a camera. So don't, don't let them do that to your equipment. But we're going to talk about equipment that you'll want to consider purchasing that won't cost an arm and a leg. I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy a $5,000 cinema camera like we have, or else it'd just be a better investment to hire a company to do it that has the equipment. This is going to be basic equipment that's going to it costs you less than $100 or maybe only like $150 in total in order to just give you a better look. So number one is you need to keep it steady. Uh, although the Blair Witch Project was a very popular video and movie when it came out at the time, it is definitely not a style that we want to uh, you know, mimic and use for our marketing. And so you want to make sure that you're keeping it steady. And there's some options to that. The first thing you're going to see is a very basic tripod. And that little clamp is a cell phone clamp. So they have ones that can be used for your cell phone. They have ones that can be used for your tablet. So many of of us, you know, don't leave the house without our phones in hand. And many of our phones these days can produce 4K quality footage. If you're not sure, make sure you go into the settings of your phone. Take a look at it. I was, we were just talking to my father-in-law. He didn't even realize yesterday that he had 4K footage. And so go in there, take a look and see if you can do 4K footage. You really want to do 4K it's going to give you some flexibility when it comes to editing, and it's just going to give you a higher quality look. With that said, though, when you're recording, make sure you offload that footage onto your computer when you're done recording, so that way you don't run out of space. And so this is a basic tripod. You're going to want to use a basic tripod if you're setting up a studio space. So similar to how I'm using it right now, I'm not really moving. It's called a talking head. So whenever it's just a still person talking, this is called a talking head. That is perfect. I just set up my camera. I leave it there. I can then turn my you know, system on and perform. That's when you just need a basic tripod. Now, you may want to consider getting a what's called a fluid head tripod. A fluid head would be one where you can do some pans that's going left to right and tilts that's ups and downs, ups and downs. And so you'll see, you know, the basic tripod can be very inexpensive. Um, the tripod and clamp set, maybe you're looking at $40, $60 for a nice actual fluid head tripod. Now, if you wanted to be walking and talking, maybe it's something that you are going on tours or you just wanna be able to have more movement with your videos, you wanna consider getting something that's called a gimbal. So this is one where you can just slip your phone into and you can then walk and talk and it's gonna keep it steady. It's not gonna have that jarring movement. And so go ahead and purchase a gimbal to be able to walk and talk. So as we carry on this uh, equipment suggestion, really what you wanna do is have the end in mind. You don't need to buy everything. I'm not telling you to buy everything. Do not buy everything. Really think about what do you want your final product to look like and what are you going to need to accomplish that? And so if you want your final products to be walking and talking throughout a home or showing off a town, then yeah, you're gonna want the gimbal. Or if you wanna be able to set up a beautiful studio space in your home or office, just a basic tripod's gonna do the job. I see there's a question here. Um, if using a phone as a camera, do you recommend landscape orientation or portrait? That is a great question. And really, when we start discussing what platforms to post to, yes, there's going to be platforms that prefer a vertical display, that portrait display. However, I always advise filming horizontally and then edit down to the vertical. And this is again, where filming in 4K is gonna help you give, you give you a bit more flexibility. And so always record horizontally that full you know, HD sizing and then edit down for those particular platforms that would prefer to have that portrait setting. And so, yes, the um, spelling the name of the gimbal, there are many different types of gimbals. And actually, if you see on the bottom right hand corner here, I have a little bit.ly link. So if you just go ahead and go to that bit.ly site, you'll see that we have um, 
various recommendations to equipment that we have used, that we have reviewed, and that's going to give you a better idea of which one's going to be best for you, depending on really how much you want to invest in. There's gimbals that already have a camera attached to it if you don't have that nice of a camera phone. Um, there is going to be gimbals that you put a DSLR on, like what we have. Um, so really, it, it, it depends on your camera system to what going to be the best gimbal for you. And so I would definitely just take a look at our recommendation page to see what's going to make the most sense for you. Okay. And I'll get to editing in a little bit. So we have a camera, whether it's a actual camcorder, a DSLR, a cinema camera, our phone, our tablet, we have some sort of steady device, whether it be a basic tripod, a fluid head, a, a gimbal, but we gotta make sure we can see you too. It's extremely important that we see you. By having nice, beautiful, even lighting, not only is it going to really make your video quality better, it's also gonna help you look younger, which who's gonna complain with that? And so there's several options when it comes to lighting. People, you know, beginners' favorite uh, is the ring light. And many ring light devices will actually have a tripod mechanism with it. So potentially you could just purchase your ring light and then be able to have your phone attached to it right there. For people who don't wear glasses, you are very lucky. Many of you can get away with just having the one ring light, have your camera smack dab in the middle, and you are beautifully illuminated. Now for us glasses wearers, it's a little more challenging. <laughs> Typically you wanna have two lights coming in from angles to eliminate shadows and to stay off of our glasses and our lenses. And so if you do have glasses, more than likely you're gonna have to invest in a little more lighting and be a little more creative and you're guessing and checking and finding out where exactly to place them to keep that light off of your lenses. It's so distracting to just see the light in your lenses at all times. So you're just gonna have to go at a little higher and a little more of a 45 degree angle coming into you. And so typically, uh, if you do need more lighting, um, these LED lights that you'll see in the middle, that's a great option. And you may want to even consider getting three so you can do a traditional three-point lighting. That is where you would have one pretty much, you know, 45 degree and 45 degree, that's your key and your fill. And then if you're not using a backdrop, like I'm currently using a green screen backdrop, you would then have a 45 backwards light as a backlight. That's going to give you some nice separation from the background. If you are having an actual office background, library background, and we're not doing a virtual background. If you're on the go, so let's say you're doing the gimbal idea, these little clip on LED lights are awesome. They can produce a, a pack, you know, they can pack a punch. And I know sometimes clients will even still put two on there because they're only like $15 each. So for $30, if you're doing the gimbal walking and talking, you can have some nice lighting to still illuminate your face. Now we are in the Valley of the Sun, which is amazing. And so you may want to consider even utilizing the sun. So that means you'd want the sun looking at your face, never have the lighting come from behind because then you're just going to look dark. Do not do that unless you're doing three point lighting, which is different because you're still having the light on your face and the backlights just to create separation. But you can utilize what's called a reflector on here on the right hand side. You're going to see a reflector, which would then if the sun was coming down, you can then angle the reflector to give you some nice bounce and bounce onto your face as well. Um, what we wanna do with lighting is eliminate harsh shadows. We don't wanna have that harsh shadow under our chin onto our neck. Uh, we wanna try to eliminate you know, how much no shadow we have. And so the more fully lit we look, like I said, it's gonna make a better looking quality video and it's just gonna help us look a bit younger. And so let me see if I have any lighting questions on here. Uh, I do see a camera question. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. Should I use my webcam or phone camera? 
That depends. Some webcams are 4K and they do a great job. So I would really look at what is the resolution of my web camera? What's the re resolution of my phone? What's my goal for my final pro you know, product videos? Do I just want a talking head like this? Or do I want to be able to walk and talk? And that's going to help you better decide which system you should use for your camera. All right. So the typical lighting setup for a one person interview, if you could do three point lighting, depending on your studio space, that's going to be the best that's going to look the best and that is kind of like your traditional lighting setup is three point lighting and so that's having the key light that's the most the brightest light that's going to be going on to you, then the fill light is maybe 50% of the intensity of your key light to just fill in those shadows. And then that backlight, which is going to be parallel from your key light to give you that little bit of a separation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on. I do see there's a couple other questions, but we'll definitely get to those in a little bit. All right, so we have our camera, we have our steady system, we have our lighting. Now we just need to be able to hear you. And so you absolutely want to consider purchasing some sort of microphone system. Do not only rely on the onboard mic, um, you know, whenever you are doing your videos because the onboard bike is very omnidirectional, meaning if you're outside and a truck drives by, it's going to hear the truck, it's going to hear you, it's going to be noisy, and you're going to be spending more time in post-production trying to eliminate those sounds. And so please make sure that you consider what system you want to get. So there are what's called boom microphones or shotgun microphones. That's something on the right here where you're just going to have it attached to your device and away from you, but then the microphone's not in the shot. And then there's also what I typically prefer, lapel microphones. So I'm currently wearing a type of lapel. Uh, whenever we're recording our clients, we really tend to put them on lapels because they're a bit more directional where it's really gonna capture your voice. So if that truck's driving by, it might be slightly in the background depending on how close that truck is, but it's not going to be overpowering. It's a lot easier to take out in post-production. Um, and sometimes it's not even heard at all. So there is, so many options when it comes to microphones. I definitely would advise taking a look at our equipment page to see what's gonna be the best fit for you. Um, there's some that are really just made for smartphones, just made for iPhones, or are a little more versatile where it could go from computer to phone to computer um, to camera. And so make sure that you choose a microphone that's gonna be best for you, but we wanna make sure that you do have some sort of secondary microphone. And they can again, vary from anywhere from about $50 and up. So, and I say and up because our systems are like $900 a pack. I'm not saying you need to buy the $900 microphones. I have a speaking client who just bought a microphone that was $80. His camera and his system that's wireless he was about 20 feet away from his camera he just sent me the footage to be able to use in his speaker reel and it is phenomenal it is so crisp you would think that he was right next to that microphone because it was just a quality wireless lapel mic so really if you're going to be moving if you're going to have a distance from your camera consider the wireless lapel mic so I do see we're having some questions pop up, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna go through the rest of our content and then I'll make sure to get to all of your questions. So I know a lot of people uh, had some questions about editing. So there's some options in editing. Number one is keep it really simple. On your phones, every single camera system has your basic trims. And so you can go into your phone, trim the beginning, trim the end. You'd really be using that if you're doing like your testimonial or review and you had someone answer, would you recommend and why? Always start with a smile and end with a smile. And then that will allow you to just easily pinpoint those pieces to then edit down. Or if you want to do a little more editing, maybe you wanna add closed captions to it. Maybe you want to add a title screen, a lower third, which is your name and your title. You wanna add B-roll footage. That's that secondary footage to support what you're saying. If you have a Mac, you more than likely have seen this purple star before. That's iMovie. iMovie comes on all Macs and it's very user-friendly. 
Or if you're a PC user, you may want to spend $100 and purchase Movavi. Movavi, again, is very user friendly. There's a lot of just preset transitions in there and text graphic animations to just make your videos look so much better. Or if you really want to step up your game, you may want to consider the Adobe Creative Suite. That's honestly what we use. When you have the Adobe Creative Suite, you can, you know, edit in Premiere Pro that's going to allow you to do everything from your transitions and your closed captions. There's actually even a closed caption plugin now where it will automatically transcribe your videos. It's amazing. You still need to edit it because, you know, AI is only so smart right now, but it really saves you a lot of time. You can use After Effects if you want to learn After Effects. That's going to give you beautiful green screen keys and motion graphics. And then Audition is for those people who maybe didn't invest in the best microphone, but wants to clean up that audio. You can use Audition. And of course, I'm sure many of us are familiar with Photoshop. You'd be able to create nice graphics that would then easily get put into uh, your system, into your Premiere Pro. So the thing about this suite is they all communicate very nicely together. So you can jump from system to system and import your items from one software to the other. Um, primarily, I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but I do have partners that use, you know, After Effects because they're just more versed in the motion graphics. Um, you know, we even have, you know, one of our team members that does, you know, 3D design on a 3D system. I'm not saying you have to go that complex. For most people, just using iMovie or Movavi, yes, Movavi, you are spelling it correct, Alex. Uh, those are great user-friendly options for people who are just getting started with editing. So, now you have your videos. Now we need to know where in the world to post these videos. Where are people going to want to see them? And so step one, we already created our video. You're going to notice that step two is going to be to upload and search engine optimize them on YouTube. It doesn't matter if you're a B2B business or a B2C business. You want to optimize them on YouTube because YouTube is the second most used search engine. Yes, it, there are some social aspects to it, but it is a search engine that's been owned by Google since 2008. Google's the number one new search engine. It utilizes a lot of YouTube postings, even in their Google searches. And it's the second most visited website worldwide. And so once you've had the opportunity to fully search engine optimize, and I'm sorry, we can't go through search engine optimization completely in this one. Um, that's a whole course on its own, but you can utilize the embed code to embed those videos onto your website, your newsletters. You can use the direct links in order to put into email newsletters, Pinterest, Patreon, if you have a membership account. Twitter and LinkedIn is also friendly with YouTube. Now, I do also recommend directly uploading to LinkedIn. If you are a B2B business, you need to be on LinkedIn. LinkedIn out of all the platforms is probably the one where we get the most new clients I've never heard of. And so four out of five people drive business decisions on LinkedIn. And so once again, if you're a B2B business, you need to be seen on there because business owners and business decision makers are spending time on LinkedIn. I know I'm kind of rushing this, but I want to make sure I get through your questions. <laughs> so after that, notice on the other side of town, number three is Facebook. Facebook and YouTube hate each other. Or really, it's just Facebook that hates YouTube because Facebook wants to be the leader of your attention. They want you to directly go to Facebook for content. And so never, ever, 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 ever post a YouTube link onto Facebook. You, Facebook has its own scheduling system. You want to always just use, if the, if the system has its own scheduling system, use that internal system because the algorithm can tell whether or not you use their system and it's going to make such a difference in your views and impressions. And so make sure you take the time to directly upload to Facebook. It's the third most visited website worldwide. And so it is a little more skewed to the B2C business versus B2B. But I do believe when you have the content, you should sprinkle around everywhere. It doesn't hurt. Now, I just wouldn't put all my eggs in the Facebook basket as a B2B business. 
On the other side of town, as we carry on down, we have Instagram. And as you know, Facebook does own Instagram. And so they can play friendly together. And over 50% of the consumers follow brands and really nine out of 10 users follow a business account. And so even if you are a B2B business, you should focus and spend some time on Instagram. It's not just for the B2C organizations. And there's definitely options when it comes to Instagram. You can upload directly to just the Instagram platform um, that's 60 seconds or less. And you can either use the full horizontal view or a 1080 by 1080 box. You can upload to Reels. So those are the one minute or less videos that do prefer that vertical setting. And so you might want to take what you created for YouTube and, and Facebook and Instagram and make it vertical for that purpose. Again, this is why you want to plan big and then edit to go small if needed. Uh, and then there's also Instagram TV. So Instagram TV is anything that's longer than a minute that you would then want to put onto Instagram. That can again be either the full display or your vertical. So you have some options. And so just sort of a before we move on to TikTok, if you are a B2B business, you want to just more so focus on YouTube and LinkedIn. If you want to do something, choose a couple of platforms, do it really well, be consistent, and then add on to it. Now, you don't want to try to spread yourself too thin. The key is going to be consistently being out there. And so if you're a B2C business, my focus more so would be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Now let's talk about that ship that's hanging out by itself, TikTok. TikTok has taken the world by storm and it has been amazing for not only B2C organizations, but also B2B organizations. Users spent $2.3 billion, billion with a B, in the app that's up from 77% from last year. Uh, that's 60% of users that say it expires them to shop. There's 1 billion active users worldwide and over 138 million active users in the US. I presented about TikTok this about this time last year and it increased 8 million within a year. And of my clients who have truly embraced TikTok, it's amazing how quickly they're getting followers and they're getting people to really watch those videos. And so B2B and B2C TikTok is a great place who does prefer that vertical plat, uh, profile imaging. I know I got really fast there at the end, but I wanted to make sure we get through everything and we had time to answer your questions. So I'm going to go through and look and see what questions we still have here. Taylor, while you're looking at those questions real quick, mm -hmm. I just want to let everybody know I'm going to post in the chat. Taylor's done four other presentations for us and previously she did a kind of a three part series. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to post those links to our content library where you can find those previous presentations she's done. So I'm going to post those in the chat so you have time to, to click on them as she's answering the rest of the questions. Yes, thank you, Robert. You know, for those of you who are like, okay, whoa, you just went through how important YouTube was and didn't talk about optimization. I know we have a presentation um, that really went in depth about YouTube optimization. And so one question we have here is, um, should I focus on me and my background to build trust or should I focus on the customer and their needs? You want to have a variety. You want to have that introduction video that talks about yourself a bit, but you do always want to focus on the customer. What are their needs also? Because really at the end of the day, think of it as dating. No one wants to just hear you blab about yourself the whole entire time and how amazing you are and what is it that you do? What's in it for me? You know, let's talk about me a little bit. And so you do want to have that nice blend. Uh, you want people to know who you are and, you know, how long you've been in the industry and why you're amazing to work with. But really, what so are you going to do for the customer and, and how are you going to help solve their problems? So I hope that answered that question. If not, feel free to post a, another follow-up question on here. Um, so what software do I recommend for adding photos? Again, if you are a Mac user, you might want to consider iMovie. If you are a PC user, Movavi, um, or there's 
apps that you can use or even just your system inside of your camera phone to do basic trims. It really comes down with, again, the end in mind. What do you want those final videos to look like? How many editing tools do you really need to accomplish that final look? Uh, record me explaining text. I was planning to record it using uh, computer camera and OBS. Is that a good idea? Better way to do it? Um, so OBS is a like kind of screen capturing platform. Um, it's really great to be using whenever you're doing like live streaming. I definitely use OBS here and there. That would be great. Uh, or if you have Adobe, you can also just use the text feature where then it will automatically transcribe what you have. Um, for those of you who are a little shy on camera, if that client is going to be working with you, if you are going to be doing even virtually face to face or any kind of face to face work, although you may not want to be on camera, you want to make sure that you do some videos where you're on camera because people want to start building that trust. That's really what video is doing too, is they're letting people know kind of how do you speak? What's your style like? You know, what's it going to kind of be like working with you? So don't always rely on just text and images and not being on camera. Yes, that could work for some videos or portions of the videos, but also try to just get out there and be seen. And so um, every phone's a little bit different. I have, how do you find the 4K settings on your phone? You just want to go, so like I said, every phone's a little different, but go into your settings. I know for iPhone, there's going to be a camera button within your settings, and then you can select what resolution you're recording in. And with everything in the world, if you're really not sure, just look up on YouTube, how to change my camera setting on say the exact name of your camera and then you'll be able to or the exact name of your phone and then you'll be able to find that answer um, so if you're walking around doing video during the day do you need an extra light yes even if there's some light think about where the sun's positioned just like where all of our office lights are positioned normally they're coming straight down or they're at an odd angle and so you want to make sure that you use an additional light in order to even out your skin tones and even out the light we don't want to have any weird split lighting or weird shadows coming on and for those of you who also needed some time consuming help i know i didn't touch on that i always advise that you take a day to do scripting. So plan a scripting day, put it in your calendar. It's not real unless it's written down. So put it in your calendar, then do a production day. Go ahead, capture at least five videos or more. If you plan on consisting posts, consistently posting once a week, that's going to give you a little over a month of content. Then within the next month, you can go ahead and plan to record another set of five videos and you can always stay ahead of schedule. So put it in your calendar, plan scripting time, plan production time, plan some editing time, and then some optimization and scheduling time. And just always try to do at least once a week at the bare minimum and stay ahead of your schedule. Uh, what about Canva? Canva's, yeah, Canva's a great site if you want help with uh, creating graphics. That's definitely so C A N V A, canva.com. If you don't have Photoshop or if you're not Photoshop savvy, definitely something great to use. Do you recommend a desktop operating system, the whole RAM, memory, storage, graphic card, et cetera? Would you recommend a desktop or laptop? So, a lot of people get surprised when I say this. I am a creative. We've been doing video marketing professionally as a business since 2014. We don't use Macs. We actually use PC computers because we were able to use a local company here to build massive machines that are super powerful that are way cheaper than a Mac. And so I personally love using um, actual desktop computers. We do have a laptop as well when we need to do things on the go. Um, but I find that when you do use a desktop, many times you have more features than uh, you know what you do on a tablet or an app and it's a bigger screen. So it's a little easier to work with. Is Facebook and Instagram useful for B2B? Um, yes, it is useful for B2B, uh, but I would still put my primary focus on staying consistent to YouTube and LinkedIn. Once you feel like you've had, you know, you're staying consistent with that, then you can kind of repurpose some of that content to go into Facebook and Instagram because uh, there is still a benefit for a B2B, but would not be my suggestion for your primary focus. 
And so what I mean by being on LinkedIn is posting regularly. And so you can do it on your personal profile. You don't always have to have a business account, but you do want to regularly be posting on LinkedIn, especially if you're that B2B organization uh, to let people know that, hey, you're in business and you have solutions in order to help people. And so uh, for Facebook scheduling, um, this question is, do they have specific hours when you can post to get more organic views? Every audience is different. And that's where in anything in marketing, you need to guess and check. You need to try out different times and see when does your audience give you the most engagement by viewing those analytics. But a general rule of thumb is typically in the morning. So before work, before nine o'clock, during lunch hours, so 11.30 to 1.30, and then in some evenings, so past six o'clock. Those are kind of those three main sections where people tend to spend a little more time online that you can then start testing. Post in those three different times and then see when does your audience give you the most engagement. All right, so what is social media for B2B? I've already answered that a bit. YouTube and, Insta or YouTube and LinkedIn, although Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are definitely ones you don't want to forget about. Um, so I have a black background and Robert has a beautiful landscape background. <laughs> what would you recommend for my videos? Uh, well, you want to do what's going to be easy for you. Yes. The only way people are going to be consistent is if video is easy. And so if having your black background works, make sure you're wearing a pop of color. If having a virtual background and being able to put your logo in there is going to work for you, do that. The more you can put your branding in there, I do really suggest that. You want to have that top of mind awareness of your brand. Uh, but really, if your office is the best background for you, because that's going to allow you to be more consistent with your videos, then do that. Uh, you look beautiful. Thank you. Uh, where are your lights right now? Do you have a light behind you or just in front of you? So for this particular setup, I only have lights in front of me because I have actually, this is a green screen right here. So I'm actually like currently touching my green screen uh, because I use the virtual background system on Zoom in order to put my logo back here. And so if I did not have a green screen or if I wasn't using Zoom, I would perhaps have some more backlighting to give me more separate separation from my background, but for this particular setup, I just have the frontward lighting. All right, so let's see on our time. Just that okay if I answer a few more questions? I know we're at 10.01. Let yeah, me know, we Robert. A couple more minutes and answer a couple more questions. Okay, I just want to make sure everyone walks away super satisfied, and I'm trying to bring my East Coast speech to move a little faster. So what software do you use for videos? Um, PowerPoint? Uh, so PowerPoint, yes, you have an ability to put, you know, to make it a, an MP4 and make it a video. You could totally use PowerPoint to create some graphics, but I wouldn't necessarily use PowerPoint as my primary editor, uh, just because again, you're not going to see yourself. You want to make sure that you have some videos where you're in there to start building that trust and letting people see who you are. And so again, iMovie, Movavi, Adobe, those are also really great options. Can I use Canva to trim my videos? Uh, I know some people who use Canva in order to do their little videos and, and to even make little videos for Instagram. That is definitely an option, um, but that's something that I don't have the most experience with. So I would definitely love to see some other videos that have been done on Canva that actually show your face. That's the key. We want to build that trust. On a scale from one to 10, how much do you recommend Movavi? Well, I do not personally use it, um, but I do have multiple clients who use it, who found it very user-friendly. So I would say just from their experiences, I would say about a seven. I'll give it a seven because it's still software that isn't as robust as an Adobe, but it is better than just using, um, you know, Camtasia, Camtasia super buggy, uh, or just using your app. Do I recommend Hootsuite? Haha. <laughs> so you do not want to use third party schedulers when it comes to Facebook. Facebook, it doesn't matter. They're going to recognize it. They're going to see that in their algorithm and then they're going to shoot it down. And so if that system has an organic scheduler on there, then you're going to want to use that system. Now, Hootsuite does play friendly with LinkedIn. So you may want to consider that for LinkedIn. I would not use, uh, I would not use it for Facebook. All right. And then some programs like Peter have pricing 
parameters? Is the program you recommend for resizing videos? Uh, I need to hear a little more information. Now with Adobe, with Adobe Premiere, for example, I can set my, what's called a sequence to be whatever it wants to be. So I can make my sequence be a 4K full size sequence. I can make my sequence be the full horizontal HD view. I can make my sequence the square 1080 by 1080 or a vertical display. And so sometimes having, um, you know, the systems like the Movavis, like the Adobe's, I can then have a little more flexibility in what do I want my final output to be when I export the video by changing those resolutions and changing those sequence settings. And then, do you personally follow a YouTube for simple production and creative ideas? Uh, I personally don't. I have team members who honestly do a lot of like the social media stuff. My uh, partner in crime, he does a lot of like the following. So I could totally ask him people he follows. Uh, but for me, I, I honestly don't spend too much time on social uh, or even on YouTube. And so that I could definitely ask uh, my partner. So if you want to send me an email, uh, anyone, so I know my email isn't listed on here, but it is taylor at financialpotion.com. If there's any questions I didn't get to, or if you want to have a deeper conversation about anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I could definitely ask my partner what sites or which channels he follows, and I can get back to you on that. Excellent. Thank you, Taylor. We went a little long, but uh, it was great to answer those questions and get that feedback. Again, I posted the pre the links to the previous uh, webinars that Taylor's done with us uh, in our content library in the chat, so you can pull up those. Taylor did also post her email address there in the chat, uh, so you can contact her. Again, thank you for being on with us today. Great presentation, great overview. If you want the deeper dive, again, those previous sessions that she did, she did some deeper dives in and a lot number of those different pieces, the roadmap, et cetera. Uh, so go take a look at those. Uh, but a great session. We're glad to have you with us again. And we look forward to the next time you're with us. But with that, we will go ahead and wrap up today. Hopefully you can make it to our special, everybody can make it to our special session on Thursday at 9 a.m. If not, we'll see you next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Until then, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody.